what's up divas and what's up divas it's your girl april and of course you know it is wednesday so it is time for real talk diva time so if you guys are like what the heck are you wearing so let me tell you first of all you girls um this is like a dress i picked this up from the store called ross it's like a sister store to tj maxx and marshall's i picked it up for ten dollars um because it was just so cute to wear in the house now some would wear it outside and it is really cute to wear at house it's super long but you know when you come home it's just hot you want to take off your girdle or your tight jeans or you just want to get out of your clothes and you want to wear something loose fitting i thought this would be perfect for that and so it's very lightweight and it's cotton and i absolutely love it especially because it was 10 bucks it may not be the most attractive thing in the world but it suits the purpose i'm not saying i'm gonna go outside and be in a fashion parade with this because i wouldn't dare to however I am going to wear it today because I'm hot. I just came back from um, the mall and it's super hot still in Arizona. It's like 90 degrees outside. So I'm like hot. The hair is not making it any better. I'm just hot. And I don't know if I'm going through the changes or what, but I'm freaking hot. So that is what I have on. And as for the hair, ladies, I've worn this so many times. This is my Rosa Beauty hair that I got from AliExpress. I will tell you this much. I love this hair. I always wear it like this because it's so thick and it's so damn hot out here. But I absolutely love this hair. Like, I wear this religiously. Put two little cornrows in it. It's a silk base closure. So, yes. Loving it. So, if you guys want a wig made by me that you would love to wear, I'll put the information for you guys below because I did make this unit. So, as for real talk, I don't have a drink. I got some Kool-Aid, some cherry or tropical punch Kool-Aid because I've already had a drink. I was out and I had me a vodka and cranberry. So I've already had a drink. And I think if I have another drink, it's going to just not be too cool. So one drink was enough for me and I'm going to relax for the rest of the evening. So if you want a real talk, subjected are basically based on your feelings or you need advice or your life, you can go ahead and send us an email here at muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line real talk. And if you want to change the name of your character, so say your name is April, but you don't want everybody to know because you never know who's watching. And you got those little nosy lurkers around. You can go ahead and change your name and let me know that in the email. So that way, I already got that said and done for me and I don't have to think too hard because it's hard enough already thinking about giving advice sometimes that's that takes a lot of my brain cells but anyway so yeah so on that note ladies let's get on to and gentlemen let's get on to this real talk All right, y'all. So I'm going to try to do three. I have so much stuff I have to do. I have to package up all these wigs tonight um, that I have to send out tomorrow. I have had a lot sale on my website, meaning um, four synthetic wigs in one lot for $55. So you get four synthetic wigs for $55. Um, of course, they were worn for like 10 minutes because they were video reviews. And my bin is like swelling overboard with so many wigs so i'm like you know what i'm just going to get rid of these i'm going to give them for four for 55 bucks and give it a deal shipping is included and send them off so i have to do that and um there's something else i had to do oh i had to wash a wig yes i have to wash a wig too so anyway so let's get this going Hey April, let me say I've been watching you for years and I love your channel. You can call me Shannon. I'm a 33 year old. I'm a 33 year old single mother that works hard. I'm in a relationship that I feel is coming to an end. In the past, I'll um, I'll admit, I looked through his phone and found some crazy shit. That's what I get, right? But I have tried to stop that shit. Now, as hard as I try to work things out, things have been changing. He gets in his moods where he barely talks or we have sex. When we do have sex, he barely cares about my pleasures and comes early on, only with I'm sorry. I'm so frustrated I'm so frustrated because I'm not used to it. Furthermore, it seems like he's in a relationship with his phone. When I tell him we need to talk and work these problems out, he just shuts down. Also, I think he gets in his moods because he doesn't have a drink. He drinks a lot. I love him, but I'm ready to just let go. Am I petty? We really rushed into this relationship, and that's what I, that's what I think I fucked up. He's more, he's more most of the time, he's here most of the time, but I believe he's cheating or about to. 
he still reaches out to his ex as I saw in his phone before but now I think he just erases the messages I'm just all fucked up please help sorry this email is all over the place I'm just so upset so this is from Shannon so she's in a relationship that she feels like it's coming to an end her boyfriend barely speaks with her he shuts down when they do have sex he only cares about himself he comes and says sorry doesn't really care about her pleasures he has been communicating with his ex-girlfriend and she's caught him because she goes through his phone and also she feels like he's about to cheat now she's also feeling like he's just erasing the messages to his ex-girlfriend and he's there some of the time but most of the time he may not be but he's really like in his moods he shuts down because he hasn't had a drink so he drink, basically drinks a lot and she feels like you know she's just tired of everything she feels like you know what she's probably about to call it oh quits what she say? she's ready to just let go and is she being petty girl please let me tell you something Shannon are you being petty no you're not being petty at all you are being smart and sometimes it takes a minute for us to realize that so it's not called petty never say that you're being petty because your emotions are involved involved and your feelings are involved that's not being petty it's not being petty when you second guess that he's cheating because you're finding things in his phone like he's communicating with his ex-girlfriend or he's always on his phone or he shuts down or he likes to drink a lot or he's barely there or he just doesn't like to communicate he doesn't care about your pleasures it's not being petty it's being um smart okay that for one is being smart if it were me and you didn't want to communicate with me and you drank a lot and then I'm finding messages in your phone from your ex-girlfriend first of all you better hope that you got two feet to stand on because if you don't I'm gonna knock your ass the fuck down Second of all, I'm not going to allow you to communicate with your ex-girlfriend. For one, what do you guys got to talk about? Do you got kids in common? And if you guys got kids in common, then I can understand a cordial relationship. However, there's really no need to delete messages. And if you feel like you have to go through his phone, then for one, that's not being petty. It's just feeling like, you know what, you're not trustworthy. So that's the reason why I'm going through your shit. However, if you are in a relationship with someone who's not trustworthy and you got to go and snoop through their stuff, then they're really not worth it. They're really, really not worth it. And I'll tell you this because I used to have to go through the same shit. And the shit that I don't like is why is you putting a locked passcode on your phone? Like, that's the shit that I don't like. To me, it's like, oh, you got something to hide. Me, I'm the type of person, I'm not putting a passcode on my phone because I don't have shit to hide and I ain't got shit to lose. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So if you want to go through my shit, then go ahead. I'm going to find out about it or not, whatever the case may be. But if you feel like you have to go through his shit, then he's really not worth your time and effort. And if you feel like he's about to cheat or he's cheating already, then he's really not worth your time. It's not what you call petty. It's called what you call your eyes is finally opening. You probably did. Maybe you did or maybe you didn't rush the relationship. However, even if you did rush the relationship, it doesn't give the other person any right to mistreat you or to talk to you any kind of way or to cheat on you and things of that nature. That doesn't give it a right because you feel like the relationship moved too fast. It's called common courtesy and it's called respect. If I can't get respect from you, then I'm not going to give it to you as well. If you can't get re give me respect, I'm not going to give you respect. And if I feel like you're cheating or you're doing some devious shit behind my back and I'm catching on to it and I'm catching you, then you're really not worth my time. So if you feel like it's time and it's time to move on, then you know what? That is your body. That is your brain. That is God's telling you that it's time to move on don't stay somewhere because you love a person you know what i'm saying like i said in the last relationship situation on real talk you're with someone because you love them and that's what you know temporarily at the time not permanently but temporarily when you leave that person alone and you leave them alone of course you're still going to feel some type of way you're going to have feelings you're going to miss them you're going to have mixed emotions you're probably going to want to feel like you want to get back with them but time heals all wounds you know what i'm saying it's always about time 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 and if you feel like this person is not suit for you he's not fit for you he's not the person that you need to be with then why carry on why make yourself fucking miserable over a person any person and it goes for man or woman if a man's with a woman and she's doing shit behind his back but he still loves her you love her but inside you're not really loving yourself because you're loving them more than you love yourself because you're allowing them to treat you like this you always have to love yourself first before you can love anyone else and i say this a lot and sometimes sometimes i'm like a little hard on people or a little hard harsh in general because this is the thing with me i've been through enough shit in my life 
to where I'm not about to let anybody tear my shit down. I'm not about to let you walk all over me. I'm not about to let you hurt my feelings. And I'm not about to let you walk all over my emotions and take advantage of me. So when I come at, when I combat with somebody that I love, you know, it's a lot of built up shit and it's a lot of shit that I've gone through and I'm just not going to allow it because sometimes it feels like I can see the shit happening already from just past bullshit and I'm just not about to allow it. So sometimes it's that little spark in your brain that's like saying, hey, hey girl, your ass better run, run, okay? Because he's not worth it. If you feel like he's cheating, let him go. And and furthermore, you know, I like to drink. I don't drink to get drunk. I don't have to have a drink every day. I may have a glass of wine. Sometimes I do like to have a drink every day. However, I drink once and I'm good. I don't drink to get sloppy drunk. I don't drink to get tipsy. I just drink because I like the taste of it. One drink and then I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I'm not falling overboard. However, if you're with a person who can't communicate without a drink, then that's a fucked up situation. You know what I'm saying? You don't really need to be with the person. Because that to me is screaming alcoholic. If you're telling me he drinks a lot, alcoholic and then when you drink a lot what are you doing behind my back that I don't know about because you drink a lot you could have been texting this bitch your ex or your new ex or your new bitch or whoever and you over there doing all kind of shit that I'm not really up for or I don't really know about you know what I'm saying so certain type of things with me I just don't allow and I don't let certain things come in between myself my life and my family and the moment I see that, I just kind of like ease back, leave the situation alone, and just go about my business. However, with your situation, I think it's best because your heart is telling you one thing and you know this is what it's telling you. But it seems like to me you want some type of clarification because you're saying that you're ready to just leave it alone. You're ready for it to be over. This is what he's doing. You know this is what you want, but you want some type of clarification from me and the divas here just to lead you in the right path. Shannon, I'm going to tell you like this. Leave his ass the fuck alone. He's doing a little bit too much. It makes me wonder. People, what you doing on the side? You drink a lot. You shut down. You can't communicate. You got bitches numbers in your phone. You're texting this bitch. And just the main thing is you just drink a lot. The sex part, okay. You know, sometimes men or some men just really don't know how to communicate too well when it comes to sex. Meaning, they in it for themselves. They want to feel what they want to feel. They want to bust their nut and then they want to go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it don't be about us. And even though we're right there, it really don't be about us. Like, you, you, you getting what you getting from me, but you pleasuring yourself. Sometimes it be like that with them. And unfortunately, that's when you got to have a little talk with them. Like, hey, listen, you, your strokes might be good, but I need you to make this about the both of us. Not just about you, but about the both of us. Okay, I could be hooting and hollering. However, you're still not just pleasuring me just like that. You're really pleasuring yourself. You're taking care of your part of the end, and then you're going to sleep on me. What about me? Here I am left to just fiddle with myself and make myself feel good and fiddle with myself. And you already took care of yourself. And here I am. I got to fiddle with myself and fiddle with myself to make me feel good. So, unfortunately, some men just are not that great in that category when it comes to pleasuring a woman. You, yeah, we feel good at the time. But then when they got their they stuff off, it's like... Damn, that was like five minutes. You done? Shit, I didn't even... What the fuck? That's how it be. So, my thing, I wouldn't even worry about the sex with him. What I would worry most about is getting out of the relationship with him and leaving his ass the hell alone. On some real shit, let him go drink his whiskey and play and fiddle with his phone with his ex bitch and be done with him. Life is too short. You're 33 years old. You still young. Life is way, way, way too short for any chaos and bullshit and stressing yourself out about a man. I'll tell you this much, guys. I was stressed out enough over a man for enough years of my life. And I will tell you this much. Never, ever, 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 ever again will I let 
any man stress me out again. I'm just not going to let it happen. I'm just not. I would rather be by myself alone than let any man stress me the fuck out, depress me, or get me going crazy. I'm not. I'm not about to sit over here and cry over your bullshit and feel like, oh my God, I got to do this because of him. And like, you know what? If I ever start feeling like that, which I won't because I'm not going to lie, but if I ever start feeling like that, somebody please shoot me, okay? But I just, I'm not about to let any man stress me out today tomorrow next week i'm not i'm not gonna let anybody stress me the fuck out and corrupt my mind and have me over here worried and upset like relationships they you know what relationships get everyone upset it's a relationship and nothing is golden and nothing is 100 percent. and we all have been there and been upset but there comes a time and a place when you have to see you know what, this is not healthy for me, and this is not right for me. And I'm seeing this, and you're seeing it, Shannon, because you're pointing shit out to me. So you know that it's time to go. It's just that you need some type of clarification to let you know. Girl, you better take your shit and go ahead somewhere and leave that nigga alone. And I'm telling you, leave him alone because in the end, it's just going to get worse. If he's not communicating with you now and he's not shutting down, then what makes you think that next week or the month after that, he's going to communicate and start talking with you and relieve or reveal all his secrets and his problems and his fantasies and wishes to you? It's not going to happen. It's just going to get worse. And also, if, he's, if he drinks a lot, you don't want to be in his company when you're trying to confront him about something and you're asking him to speak with you and communicate with you and he's trying to shut down and then you're just you're still trying to talk to him he can get to the point where he's so upset because he's drinking too much and hurt you or humiliate you and or or mentally abuse you or mentally scar you just by saying mean things so why even allow it to get to that point while you're ahead leave his ass the fuck alone and go about your business it's no love loss obviously he doesn't really care too much. And I'm not saying you don't, but care enough about yourself to where you don't have to go through the drama and be sitting at home crying, wondering about a nigga, where he the fuck at, what he doing, why he don't communicate, why we barely talk. I wouldn't want to be in a relationship with anybody who we barely talk, please. For all that, be by yourself, shit. I sometimes walk around the house talking to myself. Not because I don't communicate with anybody, but because that's just what the fuck I do. And... Shannon, you might as well do that shit too because if you got a man there and he don't want to talk to you about shit, all he is is just taking up fucking air and space in your dwelling, in your surroundings. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay? Goodbye to bad rubbish. Let that bad vibe and all that shit out the door. Get yourself some new feng shui and move on with your life and be happy for you because like I always say, life is too short and it's damn too short to be miserable with any fucking body. That's that's what I always say. Mm -hmm. I will tell you guys this. This is some really good ass tropical Kool-Aid. And I haven't drank Kool-Aid in years. But this is really good. Like seriously, this is some really, really good Kool-Aid. I don't know This is a very serious real talk. And this is how she addressed it to me. Okay, so let's begin this. It's a little long, so hopefully I can do three. I'm not really sure, but I'm going to try my best. Okay. First of all, April, I have been a subby for years and have always enjoyed your videos and your amazing real personality. I hope you have time and a strong drink because this is a doobie. Oh, wow. I just said I drank already, but I'm going to just drink the Kool-Aid. You know what they say, don't drink the Kool-Aid. You can call me Paris. Anyway, I've been going through the hardest situation for the past year that I have endured in my life. I am a 32-year-old married woman has, who has been with my husband for 12 years, married for 10, but have known him my entire life. We have two children together, and I have twin daughters from a previous relationship, whose father is a deadbeat, who are 16 years old. Obviously, I was young when I had my twins, but my husband came in and raised them as his own and are very close with them. The whole situation started with my mother, who I am estranged from due to her lifestyle of drugs and partying with my sisters. My mother hates my husband due to his, non his no-nonsense attitude and hates that she won't grow up. And he hates that she won't grow up. Throughout our marriage, she has caused many problems in our relationship, but constantly putting her two cents in about how I raised, my, how I raised my, mainly my twins. A year ago, I completely stopped my children from going to her house because of the illegal activities that go on in her home. This did not make her happy. After that, I found that my daughters were acting out, having boys in my home when I was not and 
when I was not around and posting racy pics on social media. When I took away their social media, my mother calls me angry, saying that I should let my daughters make their mistakes and learn from them without even asking my child, asking my child why. I asked her if I should let them get pregnant then I, like I did in her house. Oh, excuse me. I asked her if I should let my twins get pregnant like I did in her house. She says that I am too strict and that she was going to take my kids. A few days later, I get the police at my door in the middle of the night saying that someone called the hotline reporting sexual abuse. First thing I know, they are taking my kids and saying that my twin daughters are making allegations against my husband for sexual abuse. I am so confused because I've known my husband for so long and I would never think nor have ever seen anything inappropriate in the relationship. Nor have my daughters ever come to me about any abuse even though they have told DCFs that they came to me about the abuse. Um, Department of Children and Family Services. Okay. I have only watched this man raise these children, these girls, into beautiful young ladies, and now they are claiming to never had a relationship with him, and using words as stepfather when speaking about him when they always called him dad. I know my daughters were upset when I stopped them from visiting my mother because she has no rules for them when they were there. I never had rules growing up in my mother's house. I drank and smoked weed with her at age 12 and had sex in her house with her knowledge. Now that I want something better for my children, she hates me. I'm so confused as I'm so confused as to what to do because my kids were placed with her, even after letting Ch Department of Children and Family Services know what goes on there. They won't give her drug tests nor make surprise visits to, to catch something out of order. Please help. Need advice badly, Paris. Wow. So Paris has got like a lot of shit going on. So she's married ten years, been with her husband, or excuse me, twelve years. She's known more her life. She has a kid with him, but she also has twin, twin daughters who are 16 from a previous marriage. She's got a drug and alcoholic mother who has never been really great at raising her as a child because she let Paris run wild, have sex, drink and smoke weed in her household, got pregnant while she was a young girl in her household. And Paris has also stopped her kids, her twin daughters, from going over to her mom's because her mom never grew up. Her mother also dislikes her husband because he has the no-nonsense attitude, which I can strongly agree with. However, unfortunately, now Paris has gone through a lot because her children were taken from her through the Children and Family Services and placed in the care of her drug alcoholic mother. So, what should she do? And as well as that, as her 16-year-old daughters are claiming that her husband is now sexually abusing them out of nowhere, all of a sudden. Because, what, she took social media from the girls. They've got racy pictures on social media. Hmm. Here's the thing, Paris. First of all, I'm sorry to hear about your mom. She does need to grow her ass the fuck up because she is a grandmother, okay? Just because... And it doesn't mean because you're a grandmother that you have to stop enjoying life. But there are some things that we do when we grow up and we are adults that we just stop fucking doing, okay? There is an age limit, and I'm just sorry to say, but some people think there's no age limit to certain shit. Certain shit, there's an age limit to, like acting stupid and doing dumb fuckery shit. There's an age limit to that, okay? No one says when you're a grandmother you can't drink and smoke weed. No one said that because I'm a grandmother, okay, and I enjoy life too. However, there is a way that you go about doing things, and there's a way that you carry yourself. And if you want to have illegal shit going on over at your home with no boundaries, no rules, do whatever you want, then you goddamn right, I'm not letting my kids come to your house either. Now, having boys at your house while you're not there is a total line of disrespect. My mother did not allow me to have a boyfriend until I was 18. Of course I had one before that. She never knew about it. However, I never crossed the line of bringing no boys into her home when she wasn't there because I didn't want to die. I did not want to die, okay? However, there is a time and place for everything. And with your mother, the way she's acting, she's acting like a big child. And it seems like she's trying to control your life still by taking your kids away from you. So, unfortunately, now you got your two daughters over there with your mother. And now what you're going to have to do is fight for them. Fight. And, yeah, maybe they never went over there and seen the way your mother was living. The Children and Family Services never went over there. They never drug tested her. But you know what, Paris? Sometimes, even if you say it once or twice to these agencies, look, you better drug test her. Look, you better go do this. 
sometimes you just got to keep continuously telling them and it's unfortunate that you have to be like that but it is like that and what you need to do is you need to go over certain people's heads and go to their superior go to their um, boss sometimes you have to do that you have to reach out to a different department and go over them so that they know what the problem is if you're going to constantly go to the same department and continuously beg them or not even beg them but badger them and tell them hey why don't you do this and why don't you do that and they're still not doing it then it's time to leave that one department alone and seek help elsewhere above them look for a law guardian for your children get yourself a representative and let them know what's going on sometimes it's best that you get someone to represent you that can get these things taken care of like drug testing your mother like going over to the house and making unexpected visits when it's just you doing this sometimes the courts and these certain children and family services see you going and back and forth with them about hey go over there and check my mom and do this and because she's doing this they feel like okay you know what she's just Paris is just acting like that because we took her kids and she's upset with her mother and that's why she's making these allegations about her mother because her mother made allegations about her so sometimes they see that as that's the type of person you are because your children are taking from you so what you need to do in a situation like this is you need to get someone that is going to represent you meaning a lawyer and handle things for you let that person let that lawyer that representative for you speak to children and family services and let them know listen these are the allegations these are the things that Paris is saying that's going on in the household of her mother where her two twins are placed at right now as far as your daughters and their racy photos and social media first of all let's put it like this kids these days or teenagers these days they have no morals and I'm not going to say all of them but a lot of them just don't have no morals to life they really don't care about tomorrow or next year they're living for the present time and they're all they're worried about is all this fame and how many likes they get on Facebook Twitter and Instagram and what have you and who sees their picture and who I'm gonna look cute for and what I'm gonna wear to school tomorrow because this is really not about school this is about a fashion show because I want to outdo Sally Mae and Tammy Faye over here this is what I want to do so a lot of these kids really don't think about what tomorrow brings they care about the present time what's going on today and how they're going to get by today and how many likes they're going to get by today and it's so sad because me as a kid we didn't have internet okay when I grew up there was no internet there was no social media there was no fucking internet we went outside we socialized we spoke there was no cell phones there was no texting if I needed to ask you a question I was going to call you up or I was going to march my ass to the next room say hey ma or dad or whoever I got a question to ask you I'm not gonna sit here and text and do all that shit we communicated you know what I'm saying this is what life was about we communicated now it's like social media has taken over our children's brains and it's eating and it's just like their brains are eating away it's eating away and for the life of me I'm trying to figure out still maybe because I'm 41 years old but I'm still trying to figure out what the fuck does everybody get out of being on Facebook all day the fuck long like for real I don't even go on Facebook I will upload some shit to Facebook from my Instagram and it'll be a picture it's all about advertisement for me for what I needed to do if I want to advertise that my video is live on YouTube that's what I'm gonna do or if I got some wigs for sale that's what I'm gonna do or if this is what I got going on today not to not going on today because I'm not about to share my whole business with everybody but I'm just trying to figure out for the life of me what and I've been trying to figure this out for some years now what the fuck is so important about Facebook like all it is is you're reading other people's posts all day long about what the fuck they're doing in their business and oh yeah he bought me this or oh yeah I got a bag my boo bought me a bag or some shoes or oh yeah we went here or just reading people's quotes or whatever all day long I don't, I mean, like, they ain't showing no movies, no new release movies on Facebook, so I'm just really trying to figure out why does everybody just be on Facebook so much? And what is with the social media? Like, I guess because I was never that great at social media, like, I will get around to it when I get around to it, and that's just my attitude with the whole thing. I love YouTube because it's live, well, not even live, but I can verbally and physically say what I want to say and show what I want to show, upload it, and go about my business. I don't have all day to be checking on some messages on Instagram and Facebook and all of that extra shit. That just doesn't appeal to me. And it's just, it's just horrible the way the kids just 
cannot communicate. All they want to do is be on social media. Social media thugging. Social media bugging. Oh, I'm going to fight this girl because she looked at my shoes on social media. She just gave me a thumbs down on social media. And, and then it's like they don't have no respect for themselves because they're showing their titties, they ass, and they're showing it for the world. This is the fucking internet here. And y'all are putting racy photos like... You think because you delete that photo that it ain't already been captured, screenshotted, captured somewhere else, and that shit is floating all around. So that's like if I went and fucking put a picture of me on Instagram, regardless of what it is, it could just be a regular photo, and I didn't really like it too much, and then I decided to come back and delete it. Okay, just because I deleted it doesn't mean it's fucking deleted off the internet, because I'm pretty sure that maybe somebody else liked what I had on and kept the photo. And then weeks later, I go Google myself, and here the fuck I am, because it's happened to me. You know what I'm saying? I can't find some of my videos from my old channel, and then I Google it, somebody else got there, my videos. Like, okay, so they do these things, they post these things, not realizing in the long run, you are going to be ridiculed and humiliated and looked at and judged a certain type of way from the dumb shit that you put on social media. Not only is it fucking up your life right now, but it's fucking up my shit too because people are looking at me like, damn, who the fuck raised this kid? Like, seriously? They acting like a bunch of buffoons. You know, Paris, the one thing I will say about your mother is she needs to grow the fuck up and act her age, okay? It's cool to have drinks, it's cool to smoke weed and enjoy life, but you still need to grow the fuck up. Just because you do these things doesn't mean that you have to act like you're 12 or 15 years old, like you're one of those young kids in the street, because you're not. And she has no rules and she says you're strict. First of all, what your mama needs to do is mind her fucking business, okay? She she really needs to mind her fucking business. I try to stay out of my daughter's affairs when it comes to her raising her son, even though he's only nine months old. But I try to let her raise her son as best as possible, and I stay out of her affairs like that. I don't tell her what to do unless I see that it's harming the child that I'm going to say something. But I'm not going to be putting my two cents in it, okay? Because that's your child. Everybody's different how they raise their child. However, your mother is not a mother because she needs to grow up. And no disrespect to you, Paris, or to your mother. However, she really needs to stay in her place. And I really would suggest that what you need to do is get yourself a representative and let them go and make sure that these drug tests and these home visits and school work and such is done for your kids. Because I guarantee you, being that your mother has custody of them temporarily right now, they probably ain't doing none of their school work if they're going. They're probably smoking weed, drinking, got all kind of shit going on at your mother's house. And she don't care. However, she don't care for the time being. But when some shit pop off in her house that she really don't like and she really feels like it's a disrespect shit, that's when she's going to fucking care. And that's when she's not going to like it. Okay? So she's cool with it now because it's like one big party. We all chilling and partying up in here. Turned up. Even though I'm like 50, 60 years old, I'm going to be turned up with the 16-year-olds because that's just what the fuck I do. We all going to sit around and smoke weed together. I hope to God that one day while she's sitting there smoking weed and if she's smoking it with your daughters, I hope fucking Children and Family Services knocks on her door, okay? Because for one, I don't really even think they should have took your kids just like that because people call all the time about, oh, the child is being abused, okay? I've gotten that call. I've gotten that call because my daughter, Tati, and another girl were not getting along. This is in New York. They weren't getting along. So they started bickering every day in school. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So. Tati ended up fighting a girl after school one day. It was something like that. So that I turned in. And the mother called Children and Family Services on me. Okay, I'll never forget they came to my fucking door, wanted to come in my house, and they I had to let them in. And I was so embarrassed because, you know, you got nosy ass neighbors looking around, looking who's that going in our house, and police are escorting them in my house. And I felt so embarrassed, okay, so embarrassed. But we figured out who it was because the lady said, the worker said that my kids, my five kids, 
are terrorizing the neighborhood and terrorizing this one girl at the school. Now, first of all, I do have five kids, and not all five of them are terrorizing the neighborhood. Because Mumsy's Mumsy had to be about, I want to say, like four or three at the time. She's eight now, so she had to be like three or four at the time. So how is Mumsy going around terrorizing the neighborhood? As well as my other daughter, Nay, um, she's 12, she's 13, and Mumsy's eight, so they're five years apart. So if Mumsy was like three, um, that was like five years ago. Nay had to be like eight, eight or seven. Neither one of them was going terrorizing the neighborhood because they was always at home with me after school. And moms didn't even have school, so she wasn't terrorizing nobody, okay? And my son, Wuzzle, he wasn't terrorizing the neighborhood because he was never even with Tati. And Tati barely went outside. So we kind of like put two and two together. She tried to say that my kids were terrorizing the neighborhood, that this one girl got beat up after school. So then I realized, you know what I mean? and that we didn't have any food, and that I was an alcoholic, like, wow, I didn't even drink then like that. You know, it was just like all kind of little things, and I had to let them look through my cabinets. And basically, after that was done and said, you know, my kids was like really kind of like pissed off about the whole situation, especially because the workers had to come into my home and talk to my kids, and they were just like basically not wanting to be bothered with the shit. But I couldn't fault them for that because this is some real bullshit. Anyway, to make a long story short, they shouldn't have been able to take your kids like that because that's not what happened with me. They did an investigation and found that I was not guilty. There was nothing. There was no findings. However, I might have did some real spiteful shit after I found out it was the lady, which I did, and I will admit to it. I fucking called the Children and Family Services on that bitch and said that her house was dirty and filthy and that she had beer cans all over her fucking house and that she was a fucking slob. That I didn't lie about, okay, because my kids had already told me. But it was kind of like a tick for tat. You want to fuck with me? Now I'm going to fuck with you. And, you know, after that I did fuck with the lady. I seen her out in the grocery store with her daughter. And, you know, I kind of did threaten her a couple of times. You know, told her, you fat fucking nasty bitch. I'm going to fuck you. I'll go clean your house. All kind of shit like that, you know. And that that's not really my character unless you really tick me off. But don't put my kid's life in jeopardy over some bullshit because you being so hateful and deceitful and jealous. And because your daughter can't fight, tell that little bitch to stop running her fucking mouth. And maybe she won't get her ass fucked up after school because my daughter, Tati, is not a fighter. She doesn't go around bothering anybody. She's very calm and subtle. However, I guess it just got to the point where she got tired of it. So she had to pop the girl in the fucking mouth, bottom line. So... I really don't think they should have took your kids just like that. And unfortunately, what you're going to need to do in this case scenario, Paris, is you're going to need to get yourself someone to represent you and let them handle the situation of getting those drug testings and making those home visits. Now, I'm not giving you no advice and telling you to be deceitful like I did and say, hey, I'm going to just call too. And you know, you never know. You might call and something might be popping off at the house at the right moment. And that might work in your favor. However, I would definitely get someone to represent me. Now, as for your mother, after this whole situation is dead and clear and done, I would never say anything to her again because she shows a poor example of being an adult. She's not showing your children any type of role model or leadership. She's showing them how to become a fucking idiot, a bunch of idiots. And, and flunkies. Drink, smoke, fuck, and, and, and don't go to school. That's what you can do at 16. When your life is so crucial at 16, you got your whole life ahead of you, and you want the kids to fuck it up, and you're too strict. Sometimes when you're not strict, that's when the kids just bug the fuck out and do what they want. However, even when you're too strict, they bug the fuck out and do what they want. So it's kind of like, oh, no win, or win-win, or whatever situation you want to call it. That's what the fuck it is. However, with people like that in your life, they're not helping it anymore. They're not helping it at all. And as for your kids talking about your husband is sexually abusing them. Now, I've seen many cases on TV shows where the parents have been told that by the, the, the children. And the mother never believed the child. And it's so it came out to be, oh my God, he was really sexually abusing this person. However, if you know your children and you know your husband the way you do know him, 
then I believe in your heart that you know that this is not the truth. However, they probably are acting out, and more than likely they are, and it's unfortunate that, that kids at that age do things and they never, they don't see the repercussions of it. They just don't see. All they see is what they want and what they want at that time, and if it hurts someone else for them to get it, then it doesn't matter. They just want their way. And even if they can't get the social media back by just slandering your husband's name, it doesn't matter to them. They still got something out of it, which is hurting someone's feelings and hurting their character. So with that, I would not worry too much because I'm pretty sure that all of a sudden now they're sexually abused. I wouldn't really believe that too much. Sometimes the little birdie might be putting a little bit too much in your kid's ear. Meaning your mother and her mouth might be running it too much around your kids. And God knows what she's over there saying about you and your husband right about now. But I'm pretty sure she's badgering the hell out of you. So if the courts do not want your kids with you, then maybe they need to find somewhere that's a more stable environment. Where there's not a drug and alcoholic where your daughters can stay until all this is resolved. Like another family member that's more responsible other than your mother. And if you have someone like that, I would surely reach out to them and let them know the scenario, the situation, and maybe they can take over for your kids because they don't really need to be around your mother. She's just going to make the situation worse. So, yes, that is my advice to you, Paris. And unfortunately, guys, I am out of time because I have two minutes left on this camera memory card, and it has been 41 minutes. So I will do three next week. I do really, really promise, and I'm sorry. But as always, you guys, make sure you leave some information for Shannon and Paris below. Let them know what you would do, what you think of the situation, how you would go about it. And as always, if you want a real talk about yourself, make sure you send me an email. MuffinIsMyLovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put a real talk in the subject line. And as always, um, stay diva and divolicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Share this video with everyone that you know. Everyone. And I'll see you guys on my next video.